Hello and welcome to a new video from Excel Dynamic Array series, video number 12. I stopped posting videos to this series a while ago. However, recently a number of new functions were released by Microsoft. Accordingly, we decided to add more videos to this series to cover some of these functions. Actually, at the time of recording this video, we are in April 22. These functions are still in the beta version and available only for users with Office Insider license. But we hope it will be available for all Office 65 users soon. In this video, we are going to see how we can select rows and columns from a table and we are going to use three new functions. First one is take, second is drop and the last one will be choose columns. We have a table containing the daily sales of three products, one, two, and three. This table we update on a daily or weekly basis. What we want to report is only the last week of this original data table. So we need to report a list of the last seven days, also a list of all sales of the last week or the current week, and also the previous week or the week before the last week. Also, we need to draw a chart based on this small table. Not only this, we have here a drop down menu. We can select which product exactly, one or two or three. And also, we need this report to be dynamic. This means when we add new data, this last week will be updated according to the new data. And if we add more products or more columns to our table, the drop down menu will be automatically updated and will allow us to select the new products from the drop down menu. Let's go directly to Excel and see how we can do this together. Here is my data. It's already stored an Excel table. If you check the table design, the name is sales underscore T. It's approximately two months of data, of sales data, starting from 1st of January up to 26th of February. We need to prepare a drop-down menu containing all the products, product one, two, and three, so we can select the products for our report. In order to do so, I need a list of the products and I'm going to use this list inside a validation so I can produce the drop-down menu. I'm going to the right hand side on a column T and I'm going to start by referencing only the headers of this table. This is a very easy step. I'm going to type equal and I'm going to my table. If I hover the mouse over the first line on the left hand side, you can see this black arrow. If you just click on it, you will see in the formula bar written sales underscore T. This is the name of the table and between two square brackets hash headers, meaning that this reference is always referencing the headers of these tables. As you can see, I have a spelled array, a spelled array starting with the field date, product one, product two, and three. So I have two issues in this list. The first one is I need this list to be spelled to the rows, not to the columns. So I need to transpose this list. And this is a very easy step. I can just do it using transpose function. If you go to the formula bar before your reference, you can just type transpose. And transpose requires only one argument, which is basically the array. I can close the bracket and hit enter. And here you go. You have your output coming in the vertical direction. You have a list spelled to the rows. And now I need to make sure that I have only the name of the products. I need to exclude the first row of my new list. And this can be done through the new function, which is drop. I can drop the first line using the function drop. So I can go back to the formula bar. Before transpose, I'm going to write DROP and tab. Here is your function, drop function. It requires array and the array is the output of the transpose function. And let's go after and try to find out what is the next argument. The next argument is number of rows. This function is going to drop some rows and it requires you to give the number of these rows to be dropped. In this case, we need to drop the very first row. So I'm going to type one and then comma. The final argument is number of columns. So the drop function can drop rows or can also drop columns. But in our case, we need only to drop rows because we only have one column in this array. So I'm going to backspace and close the bracket and hit enter. And here you go. You have product one, product two, product three. And this list is pretty much dynamic. If I add another column here, let's try. I'm going to add product four. 
The table will expand and you can see your list already expanded including number four or product four. Control Z, Control Z. Now I can just use this list inside a validation. So I can go to column H and I can go to the data ribbon and from data tools, I have the validation icon. I'm going to select a list and then the source of the list, I'm going to select only T4 and I'm going to add hash after T4. The hash meaning that you need to include the entire array spilled starting this reference T4. So let me click on OK and let's check our drop down menu product one, product two, product three, no problem at all. Let's again try adding product four, no problem. The list expanded and let's check our drop down. Yeah, I have prod four, so it's working perfectly. Control Z, Control Z to undo what we did so far. Let me just do quick formatting to this cell. Here you go, my drop down menu is ready. Let's now move to the next steps. Now we need to put some headers for the new table. Here you go, I have a very simple and static headers. I have the date, current week and previous week. And let's start to build our first column. I need to put here the last seven days coming into the original data or the sales T table. So take function will take some rows or columns from the beginning or the ending of any array. So let's try to type take together. So I'm going to write equals and then T A K E. This function also requires an array. This time the array will be the column date. So if I hover my mouse over the top of this column, I'll see the black arrow. I can just select and you'll see that inside the formula bar, the name of the table says underscore T and between two square bracket, the name of the column, which is date. Anytime we add new value to this column, it will be updated automatically. So I'm going to take from an array. The array is sales underscore T between two square brackets date. Then the next argument will be as you can expect rows. So where and how many rows you want to take from this array. So I can take from the beginning or I can take from the end of the report. In this case, I need to take from the end of the report. So in order to tell this function, I need to take seven rows from the ending of this array or this list, I need to type negative seven. So if, if I need the first seven rows, I, I would type seven. If I need the last seven rows or the ending seven rows, I'm going to type negative seven. Again here, no need for the column argument. It's optional. So I'm going to close the bracket and hit enter. And here you go. You have the last seven dates from the date column. However, you can see it's general formatting. I need to change this to a date or I can do this inside the formula itself. I'm going to select the top cell of the or the first cell spelling this array. I'm going to go before the take function and I'm going to write a very good function called text. The text function is just telling Excel how you can present my data in different format. It requires first argument as value and value will be basically the output of the function take. And then I'm going to type comma and double quote in order to put my format code. I need the dates as number. So DD, this will give me 0102 up to 30 or 31st based on the month. And then dash, I need the month uh, in terms of three letters. So I'm going to type MMM. -M -M. This will give me three letters representing the month like Jan, Feb, March, and so on and so forth. And also I need the three letters representing the day, the day of the week. So I'm going to write triple D between two brackets and then close double quote for the text code. And then I'm going to close the bracket for the text function and enter. And here you go. So I think now we are ready with all the headers, headers for the columns and headers also for the rows representing the dates. So now I need to produce the data so we can draw the chart and go for the next steps. Now we need also to bring the data of the last week and the previous week. So in order to do so, let's try to start it simple and then we complicate as we go. Let's decide that we are going to only take the product one. So I'm going to bring the current week for the product one. In order to do so, it's very simple. I can do the same like what I did for the date. So I can use the take function and I'm going to select the product one exactly the same as we did last time, comma and negative seven 
close the bracket and hit enter and here you go here is the data for the last week for product one but in this case it will not be linked at all with this drop down menu and this is not exactly what i want so let's try something different this time i'm going to bring the data for the entire table for the last seven days in order to do so i'm going to go back to my formula bar and i'm going to delete the column product one and i leave it like sales underscore t so it will bring the entire table together so i have now here is the four columns of the table the date column and then the data for the three products now i need another function to help me to select the right column so i did the take i get all the columns but i take only the last seven rows i need another function to help me to select a specific column so i'm going to use the choose column function before take i'm going to type choose cols here is the choose column function it requires array array basically will be the output from the take function and then comma i have only one required argument and then a number of optional argument so it requires column number means the exact or specific column number that you want so in this case i need product two so i'm going to count one two three so i'm going to write three and close the bracket and hit enter and here you go you will have the right column i have the data for the product two the last week only but in this case again if i change my drop down menu it will not be impacted so i need this three to come in a dynamic way in order to do so i'm going to use a very famous function called match so the match will help you to look up this value within the headers of the table and decide exactly or return a number and this number will be the input of the choose column function so let's try together to write the match function so match requires a lookup value this will be the value in h4 then comma the lookup array and the lookup array will be basically the headers of our table sales t table i'm going to select and comma the third argument is the match type and i'm going to select zero for exact match and then i'm going to close the bracket for the match function and hit enter and here you go it gives you exactly the same let's try to change this to product three it's changing let's check the data together i have here 416 and the last day is 437 i'm going to date uh, 20th of february so i'm going down 20s i have 416 and the last one is 437 i think it's working perfectly so let's try to work also on the week before or the previous week i'm going to select the entire code from the formula bar Control c going to the top cell in the last column and control v and hit enter it will give you exactly the same let's try to do some tweaks here so i'm going to start by inside the take function itself instead of negative 7 i'm going to type negative 14 and see what will happen it will give you 14 days this seven days exactly like those so and then this is the previous uh, seven days or previous week so in my case i need to drop these seven days so exactly this is exactly what i'm going to use i'm going to use the drop function before the choose column function so i'm going to write drop and at end i'm going to drop the last seven so i'm going to use negative seven close the bracket and hit enter and here you go you have your table ready and you can start to build your chart or draw your chart let me do a very quick cell formatting i need only these borders I'm going to select the entire table going to insert and then from the chart section i'm going to select the lines let me just do some quick uh, formatting to this chart i think now the chart is looking good so the last thing to do in this chart to make sure that the chart title is dynamic and changing with my selection from the drop down menu in order to do so i'm going to take the chart title and going to formula bar and then hit equal and then select h4 and enter and here you go it's now pointing to it to product three if you change to product two it will change the chart the header and also the table now we are ready we are good to go we just need to test if we add new data what will happen let's go to the more data uh, tab i'm going to select data for column four or product four going back to my original data control v I need to do it just next to the last uh, column in order to expand my table 
let's check our drop down i have here product four you can just select and you can see the data the dates didn't change yet because i didn't add any new rows let's add some new rows i have here a new week from 27th up to 5th of march Control c back to our original data in the first empty row Control v the table expanded let's check the data i have here my last week updated 27th up to 5th of march and the data also updated you can check it's working perfectly i think very easy and very useful you can build on it and do a fantastic work that was all for today if you like this video please like it subscribe to the channel and leave me a comment there are more new functions to cover so please stay tuned thank you for your time see you in next video and bye